Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today I want to talk about how you can become more creative and this is something uh, that I've always regarded as a key strength of mine. I came uh, and talked to my colleague earlier this week and he asked me like, are you a creative person? And yeah, I think I've always been very creative. I've been creative in politics, I've been creative in work, in school, in how I've always been in my approach to life. and. Uh, I was thinking earlier, like, why am I creative? What was it that made me creative? And really, the best answer I can think of is reading. I started reading very early in life, and uh, I came to get a lot of information about a lot of things. And I, uh, I don't know if you read about this, but uh, most CEOs read one book a week, at least one book a week. Like a lot of the creative people we all admire, like Elon Musk or uh, Mark Cuban or Oprah Winfrey or yeah all of them read and they read a lot and why do they read what is the point of reading uh, you can ask yourself that when you think about it like what value does like fiction or science fiction give it doesn't have any accurate information it doesn't talk about like uh, real events it's not non-fiction it's just literature and uh, the answer is of course it gives you a framework to understand life and the world. It gives you a new perspective on things. It gives you a new viewpoint. Everything is just connected. And the more connections you learn, the more you come to master. And I think about it this way. Like, think about knowledge. I think knowledge has two parts. Knowledge is, and can be described as information about how the world is. Like the sky is blue or like horses have four legs. Um, but it can also be connections and connections is really where intuition really starts to shine intuition is all about your ability to see connections to see patterns to make associations to make cross references to go meta on information to go why information why knowledge why information and that's how intuitives do. Intuitives backtrack information. Instead of starting with information and how the world is and just gaining information, we go to the connections part and we use connections to gain information. We use patterns to gain knowledge, to gain uh, accurate information about how the world looks and how things are wor work. And that's all about it. Con uh, connections have so many levels. Like. A connection can be a relationship between two things, like what is the relationship between the colors blue and red? What is the relationships between a horse and a dog? What is the difference between uh, a man or a woman? Like, how can you see relationships between these different things? How can you see connections? Where do you see connections? Where don't you see connections? And this is also why the MBTI has gained such appeal with intuitives primarily, because it's all about memorizing patterns in how people interact and talk and connect with one another. If it was simply about describing information about people, that would have been something I think a sensor would appreciate. But when it's about making patterns and connections between various groups of people and seeing relationships between various people, that's a very intuitive practice. So really we come at this from different levels. And I want to go back to the knowledge aspect for a second. Because that's the thing. There is, in the middle, there is just knowledge. It doesn't matter how you got it. It doesn't matter if you got it through seeing a pattern and drawing an association. It doesn't matter if it came from just seeing how reality was and simply describing it or memorizing it. It's all knowledge in the end. It's all about knowledge. It's all about what we know about the world. And uh, in this, like, there are just two different ways we should be teaching people. Uh, I think intuitives could learn a lot more if we employed like intuitive teaching methods simply that instead of just memorizing rote information about various subjects what we should be doing is we should be uh, exploring things like we were detectives like we were researchers like we should early on as intuitives start out as researchers studying subjects finding out information for ourselves using various methods to just uh, see things, question things, and to gain intuitive knowledge about the world. And in the end, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make you learn less than if you would actually have just studied it on its own. 
it's not a faster way, it's not a slower way, it's just a different way. And the thing is, for intuitives it means a lot more, it goes faster for an intuitive than it does for a sensor. And that's really it, like I think for an intuitive, the intuitive way of learning is faster. For a sensor, the sensing way of learning is faster. So we need to diversify our teaching methods and we need to use different ways to gain this information to understand these things. And going back to the subject of creativity, why does associations make you more creative? Really, I think creativity is just about making associations. Like drawing parallels, seeing things, like it's not like we're creating information out of nothing. No, we are creating and seeing associations and cross-applying information. I get ideas by listening to different people, considering different viewpoints, looking at what people have said. I absorb it, I go off on my own into often a dark room, close my eyes, and then I synthesize, and then I process, and then I get an insight. That's typically how I do it. I go into myself, into my own like mental mind palace, and... Uh, I just blend everything I hear together in a way that to make it all fit, to make it all related, to make it all connected. And uh, here I tend to say none of my ideas are my own. Like all of my ideas are the result of brilliant people, the pe brilliant people I listen to on YouTube, the people on my Discord, and the people uh, such as Dario Nardi, such as uh, Lina Behrens, such as Carl Jung. All of these people are all giving me information about various things and then I studied communications, I studied Aristotle, I studied rhetoric and that gave me a lot of inspiration and then I went into sociology and I studied sociology and that gave me a lot of inspiration and all of it together is just blending and mixing and cooking together and that's why I tend to tell people don't just study one subject, study multiple subjects, look at things from different perspectives. Steve Jobs studied graphic design, he didn't know why but it gave him something, it gave him a bigger picture. It taught him to see connections that people who would only go into one subject, only would narrow down, would not see. And this is also something very reassuring, I think. Because there are people out there that think, where am I going in my life? Why am I just jumping from point to point? Why can't I focus? You don't need to focus. It's okay to jump from subject to subject because you are gaining something valuable in doing so. You are gaining the ability to think like an outsider in a situation where other people are just thinking the same thoughts over and over. Where everyone else in the group can only entertain one viewpoint, you can entertain 100. And that gives you the edge that helps you become the CEO, that helps you become the leader, that helps you become like the uh, person who makes big change happen. Coming into the Green Party, I had already... When I came into the Green Party, I had already considered if I was a social democrat, or if conservatism was better, or liberalism was better. And I came in there like blending all those viewpoints and trying to consider them all. I came in there and I, whenever I would go into a debate or anything, I would always think what would a conservative person say, what would a liberal person say, uh, what would a social democ uh, democrat say. And that helped me, it helped me win in debates, it helped me understand my opponents and it helped me understand that everyone is just trying to, uh, everyone is just fighting for the same thing but for, uh, from different viewpoints and from, uh, with different means. And uh, knowing that does not lead to apathy in any way. It just leads mm -hmm. to like understanding. It just leads to increased resolve, increased passion, increased enthusiasm. Because really the only thing that I see when you can't entertain other people's viewpoints is bitterness. You know, bitterness because everything is pointless. There is no connections. There is no solutions. There is no resolve. There is just conflict. There is just annoyance. Or annoyance. It's just frustration because you can't, like you're seeing different perspectives. You're seeing different people, but you don't see any connections when there are millions. And that's it. See connections. That's how you become more creative. That's how you become more understanding. 
that's how you can become more optimistic. Thank you all for watching this video and I hope to see you guys in the next one.